few things bring people together like a meal. Author Amy Zaring knows this pretty well. It's the theme of her book, Flavors from Home, Refugees in Kentucky Share Their Stories and Comfort Foods. The book, which contains over 20 recipes from countries around the world, is more than just a cookbook. It's the stories of those forced to leave their homes who have made their lives in Kentucky. Food is one of the great unifiers. It's a common shared experience. I wanted to write about refugees and their favorite native dishes because of my work as an English language teacher. At the school where I taught, we would have occasional potlucks. It was at those potlucks that I saw something interesting happen. I saw such a diverse group of people coming together in a way that I hadn't seen them come together in the classroom. And I really saw food, the simple act of sharing a meal together as a universal language, as a heart language. Participants in the book come from around the globe and arrived to Kentucky as early as the 1950s and as recently as 2012. Several of those interviewed for the book have opened successful food-related businesses such as restaurants, catering companies, and grocery stores. One such story is of Uzar and Ada Akrami, who became refugees in the wake of the Iranian Revolution in the late 1970s. A family of self-described foodies, the Akramis quickly became known for their delicious cooking, a hobby that eventually became a small catering business called Shiraz. In 2006, eldest son Ramin transformed the business into a brick and mortar restaurant. Today, Shiraz has four locations and a loyal clientele, a following he credits to his traditional Persian cooking style and the cuisine's appeal to many different tastes and cultures. Iranian food is kind of addictive. It's simple and it's cooked on fire, which we've done for thousands and thousands of years. So there's a inherent familiarity. The main ingredient of all of our dishes that we cook here is lemon juice. And the flavors that natural wood brings out in different proteins and vegetables. Our food is a, is a moderate means that appeals to all cultures. And that's what's been the most amazing and surprising thing to me, is how much we share in commonality across all races and, and sects of, you know, it's food, we all eat it, you know, it brings us together. Another restaurant tour featured in the book is Huang Coco Tran, a Vietnamese refugee who came to the U.S. in the 1970s after her country was overtaken by the Communist Party. Tran arrived by boat along with 18 relatives, including five school-aged siblings and her 65-year-old father. 29 years old at the time, Tran felt it was her responsibility to care for her family and worked several jobs to keep them going. But early on, a seed was planted that she could do more. They say the story I never forget. Just one week, I came to Louisville, and my sponsor, she took me out for lunch. We came to Madonna the first time in my life. <laughs> she asked me, what do I want? And I never in the hamburger, you know, store before. And I watched in her. I see how everything new to me, and she come to the counter, and she order. Then later, they give her the tray. Then in my mind, I think about someday, I will make the Vietnamese or Chinese oriental food, fast serve it like that. Then uh, four or five years later, my first dream come true is the egg roll machine in 1980. After the egg roll machine, Tran went on to open eight more businesses in Louisville. Some of them became local legends, like Cafe Mimosa, a Vietnamese and French fusion restaurant once located along Bardstown Road. Most recently, she opened Heart and Soy and Roots, two health-conscious restaurants under the same roof. To her, they represent a coming home to Vietnam. One dish, Quang Yellow Noodles, is even named after her hometown. While her recipes help her stay connected to the culture of her youth, she sees them as a way to connect with others as well. Well, you know, you never forget where you come from. I had a friend, customer, and say, where you go to school for cooking? I said, I had no school to learn at all. That's only on my memory. 
I like to cook, you know, and uh, I like to see the people enjoy my cooking. You see food everywhere. Food starts the story. When you meet the people new, oh, they have food around, you know, welcome them. The impact of refugees can be seen in just about every community in Kentucky, reminding us of the ways we are all connected beyond a meal or a dish. Zering says it best in her books afterward. The offering and sharing of food can transcend language and other boundaries and ultimately remind us of the rich cultural heritage we each bring to the table. Hey everybody, I'm Chip Polston and I am cherishing this Kentucky life. And if you enjoyed that story and would like to see more, click right here to see more.